Yeah, it's a good thing. 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 Yeah, I think we give a few minutes for people to find the room. We give few more minutes for people to find the room. Oh, I thought you said a specific person. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a G here yet, a presenter. So. Mm. <laughs> Maybe give another minute. Okay. Silent in here. Hmm? It's very silent. silent. In here. Yeah. Before the storm. <laughs> yeah. I think we should stop. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, welcome everybody. Uh, as you can feel, the room has been heated up for like very warm and you know active discussions here. So, <laughs> just to prepare you all. So, welcome. You have ended up in uh, the LSVR working group here. And yeah, so before we start, a few you know uh, slides here. First is the note well, which you probably have already seen like a few times this week. It basically means you know whatever you say and do here will be property of the IETF. So if you have like any patent stuff and so onwards, you know, be careful on that. We also have the the really note well, which means you have to be polite and kind to each other, and create like a nice environment for like you know friendly communication here yeah, for everybody. Uh, yeah, we have already seen this thing, so if you ended up, it's Thursday afternoon. If you are not aware of this, then you probably have not really attended a lot of sessions at this point in time. But anyway, uh, this is some quick meeting tips thing here. Uh, now, before we start with the session here, so still the same two chairs here. Uh, for the JavaScript, if there is like anything, please let us know. Huh? Keep monitoring the queue a little bit. For minutes, uh, please make sure that you know if you can actually help us with you know putting the minutes in in place and correct where necessary. You know that will be very well appreciated. And now let's go over to the agenda. So we do have an agenda here. So 
We didn't have a lot of email communication on the working group, but we do have an agenda with different topics. So that's pretty cool. Uh, more on that later on, you know, during the closing of our session here. So anybody would like to change anything on the agenda or is unhappy or fails to relieve some heat from the room? Nothing yet, okay. What I'd like to add, Clint to advise everybody raising the bar on the 16th. Keep that thought. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go over the document status, uh, our main specification. Uh, so the Shepherd review was done and it was posted uh, in end of, towards end of September. And uh, the authors are working on the changes. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have much discussion on the mailing list for the review and I hope that uh, we do really uh, more discussions on the mailing list. However, uh, there were, uh, uh, to make it efficient, uh, I did have uh, a, a call with uh, the editors of the draft and we did go back and forth quite a bit. Uh, so uh, I think uh, the, I let the authors present uh, the status. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jim has returned the uh, draft to the working group, so we'll work through these things. The LSVR applicability, there is no change, uh, and uh, I think we discussed last time this will be taken up uh, post uh, uh, the main spec is ready. And then uh, there is an update for the uh, the Yang model which uh, Mahesh would be presenting today. Uh, we have uh, three other working group documents which Randy has uh, refreshed and uh, they are now active. And uh, we'll talk about these uh, towards the, after all the presentation in the closing. And uh, with that, we'll switch over to with Kayur. Uh, I got a quick question. Are we going to talk about charter before or after? After. after. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't prepare myself. Thank you. <laughs> what am I doing? All right. Thank you. Uh, Kayur Patel Arkas, I'm going to talk about the latest st status of BGP SPF draft. Uh, this is the work done here with ACVM, uh, Derek Abai, and uh, folks. The draft version 28 was uh, submitted uh, uh, on 829. Obviously, we got a nice review done by Ketan. Thank you so much. Um, as part of Shepard's review. Um, again, the status of this draft is that the last call has been done, multiple implementations um, now available. I'm told that a couple of vendors have implemented um, the draft version and there is an open source implementation as well on this. So um, looks like it's holding up okay. And obviously uh, we did an early review on routing directorate um, that has also been done. So all the reviews have been pretty much completed. Uh, ops, the review is also done. Alvaro did a detailed review as part, uh, as part of the past AD review. Um, and the Yang model is also submitted fairly straightforward on this. Um, I'm going to talk about what Ketan gave as a feedback. It was quite deep and insightful. Uh, first of all, um, he suggested that, hey, since we use existing mechanisms for liveness, Case in point BFD, that should be a normative reference. Uh, we'll make the change. Um, he suggested removal of algorithm TLV, um, suggested to use the default TLV, which we are using currently in the implementations. And as we need uh, more algorithms to be inserted, we can have a separate document on that. So, uh, or we can, we can figure out the way then 
So the base spec will remove this, should be okay uh, from an implementation standpoint. Um, suggested an addition, addition of additional text for linked identifiers and the criteria to match. Now this is where we will need to add some text, uh, obviously, and then need to look into implementation as to how do we sort of beef it up um, to make it a little more robust. Also suggested removal of advertisement of prefix mask um, as a link attribute um, and sort of make it similar to OSPF v3. We are looking into this uh, and see how best we can incorporate this. There are other nits and editorial comments um, and some of these changes may uh, force us to revisit the implementations. Um, I think the changes are again, even in that case, uh, quite minimal or incremental, should I say, uh, won't impact major implementations. So we should be good to go. That's all I have. Questions? A question for chairs is, would you like to do reissue a last call after this, or you would still want to go ahead with the previous last call uh, as we respin the draft? Uh I think uh, we should, as you pointed out, there are changes, so we should do a working group last call. Sweet, thank you. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, there you said there are changes to implementation. I think you are speaking for one implementation. I hope we hear from others as well if there are any issues uh, with compatibility or any other, any other alternate ways to address the problems. Yes, yeah. indeed. There are quite a few implementers in here. <laughs> G. Hi, Chidong from Huawei. I just like to thank the authors for the work and thank the working group for the review. And actually, we are working also working on some implementation of this. We'd be more than happy to do interop when the time is right. Great. Thank you. AC Lindum uh, Lab N, not Cisco. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I just like to say that I uh, we'd like some feedback on, especially the you know the bit the the one change that's going to be fairly you know a little bit different is not we're not we're going to take out that new if we take out that new sub TLV for the prefix mask that we added, so we did so we could avoid an extra prefix NRLI. Well, Ketan suggested that we keep the links, keep it uh, just the topology as opposed to the uh, topology plus the prefix like OSPF v3 is. And if, you, if we want the link subnet exposed, which you probably would for, mo for monitoring, you'd av advertise that as a prefix. So everybody, I, I'd like you know, especially if you're looking at implementations, to make a comment on that. That's the that's the one thing I looked at and I said, well, you know, it's been like this for five years or four years or whatever. Do we really, you know, should should we change this? Yeah. And I think uh, the uh, point also was that there could be multiple prefixes on the link, and uh, then uh, that's true. That's true. Then you'd have to, you know, you'd have to accommodated a different way yes. yes you'd have to advertise those as prefix nrli anyway correct so, uh, the re uh, the review is are all like suggestions and comments uh, finally it's up to the working group which includes implementers to you know uh, really work things out okay thank you thank you All right, uh, I'm Mahesh, and I'm going to present the Yang model for um, BGPLS and LSSPF. So we did submit a 
and I showed two versions of the model uh, quite recently. Um, the, a quick introduction here, uh, the model basically is uh, configuring and man, uh, sorry, specifying both the configuration and management of BGP LS and LSSPF. Um, and of course it defines a model for the link state database also. Um, so update since 01, um, we have added support for BGP LS attributes, um, looking at, of course, 7752 bis. Um, but I, even after look, having added it, I am at least aware of a limitation that I did talk to Kathan a little bit about um, as it relates to support of sub TLDs within that. So. I might have to redo a bit of support for BGP LS attributes. Um, then uh, we do have an ability to, of course, maintain and uh, when we do have statistics, we want to be able to, of course, clear them. So that capability has been added. So in terms of next steps, um, we still have to add support for links data and LRIs. Um, and of course, uh, support for um, LS and LS SPF in RIB part of the BGP model. Uh, I do have a few examples already in the draft, but as uh, you know, we up keep updating it, especially from a configuration perspective, I will try to add a few more examples to kind of at least uh, make it clear um, how to configure um, using this particular model. Um, as usual, uh, the code and issues are at the GitHub locations. Uh, feel free to um, either file issues or even suggest code changes if you want to, and I will be happy to take a look at them. All right. Um, uh, Ketan Talaulikar, Cisco, uh, no, no hat on. Uh, so uh, as you said, it's a bit uh, challenging to uh, export the BGPLS because of the multiple TLVs and uh, nested sub TLVs. So I wanted to check with our LS IGP expert, AC. Uh, and since AC, you have worked on the IGP models. Uh, is there something that we could borrow from there? We as far as I remember, we've not done the LSDB. We did take a look at OSPF yeah. model. Yeah, yeah. We, we, did, we did do LSDB, but it's very specific to the OSPF component. It's, uh, not, it's not like a generic LSDB. Sure, but could we follow the same, same so we similar did, things? Uh, by the way, I, we did take a look at the OSPF model to see if there was other precedents to this. And I think they have the, some of the same problems that we are encountering from a model perspective. Okay, so that even I don't that... think so. They have support for sub TLVs in the model. So, do we have uh, is support for sub TLVs and sub sub TLVs at uh, at whatever level in the OSPF model? Yes. Okay. Now the question there would be, and um, is it like a fixed size? Because I. It's nested into Also, you have essentially put. A container within a container to try to support sub TLVs, and from a language perspective, you have not run into any issues with that because so, you're kind of pointing to yourself when you're referring to sub TLVs, so, so especially if they have the same format. So, so maybe for discussions, use the mic for the people you know online. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, AC. Uh, so I'll just echo what AC mentioned off the mic is that. Uh, they do have support for sub TLVs in OSPF, so we'll take another look at it. Um, but when we did, uh, Jeff and I were looking at the model yesterday, um, we didn't feel that that might support especially variable size uh, sub TLVs. For a fixed size, absolutely. But how do you specify upfront in a model what the depth of the sub TLV is going to be? I don't see why you have to do that. Um, I mean, how many, how, uh, I mean, uh, because, oh, I, I know that you have, we have unknown TLVs. Yes. 
and then we have TLB. So for the cases, there, there's a finite depth to the ones that we've defined, and those ones are defined. The other ones are unknown, and you just do the top level and the length. Right. So for the unknown TLV, absolutely. Right. I think we stop at the wherever the definition of the unknown TLV. Exactly. Is. Exactly. Right. And for the known TLVs, you know how deep they are. Yeah. So that was the question yeah. uh, as I was asking Kate in offline was, is the length for known TLVs uh, known depth? Yeah, yeah. And I don't think we we have not. I haven't looked at it. I think Ying Zhen might have taken a crack at a first set. We haven't done things that are nested deeply like flex algal, but I think she might have taken a crack at it. I, I can't remember. But in the base model, there's nothing like that. There's just, you know, the the TE LSA right now in the is the deepest nested one in the base model. Right, right. So yeah. one example is in the OSPF V2 or the OSPF V3 extended LSAs, we have the L2 bundle member, uh, yeah. and then that has all the other uh, attributes coming it underneath it. So we did not have that. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point, we introduced uh, the L2. Yeah. So is yeah. the I, 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 I doubt we have done that in a, in yeah. a simple way. Um, so the and if we don't, we may have to have separate uh, a separate grouping. You know, just yeah. So even even if it replicates some of the same information, if right. it's not if it's not yeah yeah. So I think probably the problem is uh, the or the problem statement is that uh, if or when we introduce something a new TLV which could have sub TLVs, uh, could we extend the model to do that? I think that's about it. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I. It seems we could, but as long as uh, we don't flatten it. Yeah, I think we can't the, flatten it. Yeah. Yeah, we can't flatten it, right? Okay. So I'll take a look at it. Uh, I, one possible solution is to have a leaf ref into the sub TLV, which is defined, so that then you can kind of recurse yourself. But from a language perspective, I'm not sure whether you can have a leaf ref back to yourself, kind of, if you have sub TLVs. Something to try out. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. That's all. Thanks, Mesh. Hello, everyone. My name is Han uh, from Huawei. And I'm going to talk about uh, BGP SPF for multi segment SE1. So, first uh, is a recap of SE1. How does SE1 work? Kind of like an IPsec kernel uh, on top of existing VPN paths. And the BGP is used as a control plan to distribute the IPsec SA and the port attribute. For example, the public IP address and other. Uh, transport network information. And this uh, is, is defined in this IDR uh, working group job called SE1 Edge Discovery. Uh, from the name, you can you can see it's Edge Discovery instead of Terminal Discovery. Actually, it only passes the terminal endpoint information uh, between, the, between different CPEs. Uh, after that, uh, the CPE can choose to establish a terminal and uh, it needs to maintain the terminal. But there is no information exchanged about the terminal sta status between the, the controller and the CPE. Then we have the multi segment SE1. Uh, the use case for this multi segment is that uh, uh, sometimes the one segment, one hop over public internet, the quality will not be good. So we can use multiple um, locally op optimal uh, op optimal tunnel to 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 get the better quality. Uh, for example, there are many different tunnels you can use. Uh, uh, for example, the SE1 tunnel uh, over the internet or MPRS, and Microsoft is also proposing a SE1 tunnel over cloud backbone, and we also have uh, the direct link 
if, if the direct link is used, there is no need for uh, SE1 terminal. Uh, there is no need for the IPsec encapsulation. Then in this multi-segment SE1, we need kind of like uh, overlay overlay SPF. Uh, it's need, need to calculate which path, which overlay path is the best. So we use the BGP SPF to connect this overlay SE1 uh, terminal topology, and uh, it uh, connect both the so SE1 terminal and the direct link. The node NRI and the link NRI is shown here, and the link attribute uh, will include the SLA for the calculation of the shortest path. Uh, this, this is just a usage of the BGP or SPF. There is no extension here. Then we propose another extension to the BGP RS. This is for connecting the link type. SE1 terminal uh, may over different underlay, and they, sometimes they can just run over a, a direct link. So there are uh, many, many choice uh, of the SE1 terminal, and uh, different customer may re may have di different quality requirement uh, for different link. For example, for the fintech customer, some bank they require a high secure high secure link. They don't want to run their traffic over the internet or LTE path. They only run it over the LPS or, or, or physical link. And some customer really just wants the highest quality link. So they don't want to use the overlay, only the underlay. And sometimes the LTE is only used as a backup. Uh, when the main path fails, the LTE link is used. So we need to exclude the LTE links from the BGP SPF calculation. So here we are proposing a new link attribute TRV to carry this link type. Uh, the link type is in this uh, as, as, as a table. Uh, basically, we are uh, using the BGP SPF to connect the SE1 link topology. And we propose an extension to the BGP or SPF link attribute to carry the link type. And we change it to the information or to the standard track because they have a, a BGP or SPF link attribute extension. So we would like to see comments or suggestions. Any, any contribution is welcome. Uh, this is pretty interesting in sense that now on an overlay, you will do a, a graph building. Is assuming the underlay will always be a IP connectivity or will there be a tunneling involved? Currently it's IP underlay or MPRS, yeah. But IPsec? Uh, if it's using direct link, then no IPsec. Okay. But mm -hmm. if it's a multi-hop, then you will use IPsec. Uh, one hop can be the direct link. There is no IPsec. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, uh, Ketan Talaulikar. So if I look at uh, picture number uh, four, I think slide number four. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a kind of tunneling. At least that's how to answer Kate's yeah. question. Because uh, so tunneling the will are then. Tunnels. Sorry, I was going to say then tunneling will help uh, yes. eliminate the. Uh, packet forwarding loops. Yes. Well, it looks good. But it is interesting in sense that it is the first time graph being used as an overlay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Ketan Talaulikar. Uh, uh, so this is actually BGP peerings and they are over tunnels, as I think Keyur mentioned. And we and the use case here requires that a graph be built, and the best path or uh, optimal path for a certain thing be yes. done. That's yes. the use case here. Yes. So it goes beyond uh, data center, but it is still uh, a link state topology that is built uh, and using BGP as the underlay. So mm -hmm. uh, one suggestion on the next. Uh, slide uh, for the link this new tlv uh, have you considered using affinities uh, so we have 
in igps we have uh, link colors or affinities uh, which one can include or exclude uh, for any type of uh, computation path computation oh so it's kind of for the path computation strategy yes and this is for the path uh, link type information connection sure. there is a two different thing yeah yeah so the way uh, in traffic engineering and in igps uh, the affinity is used is that it's abstract notion mm -hmm. so uh, an operator could have all their internet links colored red all their mpls links colored blue and you know tomorrow some other link time comes it could be purple yeah so you could have a the path computation which excludes uh, let's say you don't want to go over the internet excludes that color it's a level of abstraction uh, mm -hmm. just a suggestion if you want to consider that so if you are using corner or in an abstract way is there any extension needed uh, no that it, it already exists in yeah yeah, I think so. yeah yeah g Uh, just uh, to a uh, quick thing about the uh, using color instead of this link type, I think there here they may want to some have some more uh, flexible link selection policy, not just to exclude a specific type of a uh, link, like uh, using something like the backup. So I'm not sure why the color can be used in that case. Oh well, yeah, the backup case is more complicated. It's kind of like an uh, overlay reliability. You need a whole solution for that. Yeah. Kiyur uh, Patel Arkas. One quick question. If you use this new TLV, mm -hmm. um, this TLV will be very specific to SPF Safi, correct? Uh, RS, it's just, it's, um, BGP RS attribute. Yes, but yeah. it will be only specific to BGP SPF Safi where BGP LS is used. Yes. Yeah, because uh, the BGP LS that is used at the wider scope uh, mm -hmm. may not find its use. Yes. So you're doing this as an overlay building. So it, it would be very specific to SPF Safi only. I think it will be nice to make a note of that. Okay. Thank you. Any okay. other questions? Okay. So should we ask for working group adoption? Do you think it's mature for that? I, I think we need some discussions at least on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, and also for the moment, you know, this topic is still not, not part of the shortage just mm -hmm. yet. So, you know, one of the reasons we're going to be discussing this at the end of the okay. this particular meeting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, G. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Jidong from Huawei. I'm going to give a, a presentation on this uh, some proposed update to the BGP RS SPF NRI selection rules. Uh, some background and motivation. We know that BGP SPF has, was designed for the uh, link state information distribution and using SPF pass computation uh, in the MSDC scenarios, and it may be also be extended for other scenarios as well. Uh, currently, the BGP SPF NRI defines its own NRI selection rules for all the BGP RS SPF uh, NRIs as below. The first rule is to uh, prefer the route uh, NRI originated by the directly connected BGP SPF peers. And the second one is the NRI with the most uh, recent sequence number, TLV, is uh, select preferred. The third one is uh, the NRI received from the BGP SPF speaker uh, with a num numerically larger BGP ID is preferred. Uh, this kind of rules are simple, but uh, during some Analysis, we found that in some cases, uh, these rules may not be enough 
to provide a, like either deterministic selection result or it may cause some delay in the root convergence. So we think maybe some additional rules will help in those cases. Uh, here uh, shows the first uh, problem scenario, which uh, the, is about the delayed convergence. As shown in this picture, there is a failure of the BGP session between R2 and R3. It is detected by R3 either by using BFD or other detection mechanisms. And according to the BGP SPF draft, to avoid the road flaps, R3 will hold all the NRIs received from R1 for this uh, a specific period. And during this period, if there's uh, another link change, for example, the link between R1 and R2 change from down to up, R2 will generate a new uh, update of the link NRI R1 to R2 with a greater in the sequence number. And it is NRI is advertised to its P BGP peers. Yeah. So, but R3 will not receive this directly from R2. Instead, it will receive it from R4 with the latest link NRI of the R2 generate for link R1 to R2. But in this case, according to the SPF selection rules, R3 would prefer the link NRI received from R2 directly. So this is a cause that R3 will not use the latest link NRI for both for its own SPF computation, nor it will advertise it further to its peers. And in that case, uh, this root convergence can be delayed in the network. Uh, Jay, would you like to take questions? Okay. Yeah, AC Lindem 11. I guess this is a what the drafts means rather than what it says literally case, because once the session goes down, it's no longer directly connected and rule one wouldn't apply. That's what it means, because the, 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 the first rule is to accommodate the case where the router loses its state and restarts, and you have a session. But yeah. so it's no longer directly connected. Are you, I mean, I, I, mean I, yeah. I, I don't argue that yeah, it could, it could yeah. be clarified in the draft, but that's what it means. Yeah, this, ca this case isn't, 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 isn't. Uh, so you really, mean some clarification in the draft is needed? Yes, yes. For this yeah. case, for this case, oh, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. That may be one uh, solution to this uh, problem. Yes, so uh, Ketan here. Uh, G, I think it would help as you are implementing this, if you find such questions that you just use the list yeah, to bring yeah. it up. Okay, yeah, that is uh, uh, one of these uh, problem scenarios. Uh, maybe some clarification in the text about what uh, should be done in this case will be helpful also. Okay, here's the uh, second problem scenario, which is about some redundant uh, advertisement. Uh, in this case, there's a new BGP session established between R1 and, and R6, and R1 advertises link NRI to its neighbors. Uh, R2 firstly receives this link NRI R1 to R2, R6 from R1 directly, and it will select it as a best and advertise further to the R5. Then R4 also receives this link NRI with the uh, same sequence number, um, and R4 will advertise, uh, R3, R4 will advertise this route to R2 because it will consider this one is a preferred, uh, from the preferred peer with a larger BGP ID. And then R2 compare this to an RI received from two peers and it will also prefer the route uh, received from R4 and it will generate, uh, generate a new update uh, to R5. But in this case, actually, these are the same link and are advertised to R5 twice. So this is considered as a redundant. Uh, the third problem is like in this uh, scenario uh, where uh, two routers have parallel BGP sessions established and the same NRI can be received, uh, the same NRI with the same sequence number can be received from both sessions. And but the current NRI selection rule does not uh, tell, in this case, how to determine which one is the preferred route. And it may be either the one received from the first session or the one from the second session be selected. In some kind of natural scenarios where the op for the operation, the troubleshooting, 
uh, it is preferable to have a deterministic result of the neural selection, even in this case, so that we may consider further uh, tie-breaking rules to make, to make sure the selection is deterministic. Oh, so here are the proposed update to the neural selection rules. Uh, firstly, we can see that the, we add some rules following the existing rules, such as for the NRIs received from the EBGP peers, the NRI with a smaller number of AS numbers in the SPAS attributes should be preferred. This is to help that you can do some tie breaking and usually uh, the route with the shorter AS paths can be received first so that you don't need to have this duplicate advertisement. And similarly for the NRIs received from IBGP peers, this is a, in the model where you use IBGP for the network. Uh, the NRI with a smaller a number of the cluster IDs in the cluster list should be preferred. And in the end, we also added the road where to do the type looking between the peers from the same BGP uh, uh, BGP router, so that with the peer, the route received from the peer with a smaller peer address should be preferred. Uh, so, but I, I note here, like uh, for the first scenario, as uh, AC mentioned, there's uh, many different options to either clarify clarify the existing rules or we define some specific rules for that case, we, uh, or we modify the existing rules. So this is still for further discussion. Okay, so here we just want to collect the feedback on the problems and also the proposed update to the selection rules. And uh, so that we can revise this. And uh, since the draft is already, the BGP SPF base draft is stable. We're not, we're not sure whether this can be merged directly to the base or we make it a separate document. Okay, thank you. Yes, Kier. I've got two comments. One, uh, you're probably best off keeping this draft separate. I think it's a good optimization. We just should figure out a way to get that um, uh, rolled over the draft. But I think the version 28 is quite stable. Pending Ketan's uh, feedback and any changes we end up doing, I think at least the authors think um, that it is ready. At this point, we are getting comments that are revisiting other comments. So I think we are getting to a point of, uh, you know, I would say minimal returns or in no returns, if any, right? That's comment number one. Comment number two, can you go back to a one slide, please? Yeah, one slide. No, one no, slide. just, yes, okay. thank you. Um, number four, you are assuming that the class deployments will be IBGP. Yeah, in case okay. this is uh, used. Either. Yeah, maybe you want to make that very specific. I get it, but I okay. just want to clarify okay. it because be in EBGP, improved. you probably will face the similar issues, but what you are assuming, then it will fall down to number five and six. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can add a clarification in the text. ACLendum11. Yeah, I think I think at least for the first one, we should just fix that definition because that was never meant to be a, 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 interpreted to be a directly connected peer once the session's down. You don't take the old, even though it came from the peer, if it's down, it's not. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, it's broken. It's broken if we don't do that. I mean, it, like you said, it will be a real long convergence. Yeah. So we're, I, I think we're going to fix that. But for the other ones, this is all related to the fact that we didn't want to change the base BGP advertisement. So, and you make a good point that if you don't change the base BGP advertisement, you have copies of the same NRLI from different, different peers and which one to prefer. Uh, I'm thinking, I think when we wrote it, we were thinking more like IGPs where it doesn't matter as long as it's <laughs> the same one, right? But yeah, you, you, we can keep that in a separate document. Or, but I, I see what you're saying. I mean, the other cases are a lot of the selection criteria. Yeah. I mean, the fact it, you're, you're, you're right, we don't have it precisely defined, but it doesn't matter in the outcome of the SPF. Yeah, for the result, it doesn't matter, but they may 
add some uh, additional burden to the nodes, uh, sender and the receiver, right? For the first one, I think uh, just uh, to maybe further clarification, uh, in case this session is done, R3 will maintain all the routes from R2, but they will, do you think they will mark it as uh, stale, stale or? Yeah, stale or I mean, so, we say, we say they're stale, we have a time limit for stale. Yeah, yeah. but still, uh, in the route comparison, they will not be used, uh, considered as a route from the direct peer, right? You think this yeah, rule is, does not apply in the case? Okay, 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 thank you. So, Ketan uh, Talalikar. So, G, when the update comes out of the draft, uh, you should review it and okay. find and flag or bring up to attention all these things. Okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a comment about the other things. Uh, as long as the behavior is local to the router, uh, I think uh, it might as well be done as a separate document. It has yeah. no uh, implications. But if there is anything that uh, needs the, uh, it's not local or needs the peer to know or a network wide deployment, uh, I think the working group should consider whether that's something worth rolling in the base spec at this stage. Yeah, Kevur Patel Arkis. Uh, we, in our order to, uh, two things. In order to keep implementations simple, we're trying to also get implementation experience. I think my preference or probably uh, AC, unless you feel otherwise, our preference would be to keep it uh, separate. It's a good document and, and it can ride on SPF. So I think uh, um, that is also, um, and it may be good to document it as well, so. And they might find other things that are going along too. Correct. Right. Repeating what AC said, he we might find other things that goes yeah. along, so that it could be incorporated in this. Okay. 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 So we are at the end of the presentations, and now. So this, this last part actually is more to discuss about you know, uh, the, the, the future of you know this particular working group as such. So we started this this work like quite a while ago and we created a working group under the assumption that there would be like lots of interaction, you know, very vivid discussions and you know many interested parties involved to develop this new routing technology. And now, you know, like a couple of years later, we actually are almost at the end of this first, you know, journey here. And so we have a good draft, which is nearly ready. We had like a great shepherd review of this thing. We had like an AD review before. So, you know, I think the end point for the first charter is coming very close, you know, in front of us. Now, this also starts, you know, um, us to think about, you know, what is going to be next, okay? So there are actually like a few observations, you know, we actually have as chairs eh, is that, you know, so uh, during the, the last IETF meeting, eh, we discussed also like, okay, you know, we're gonna bring up uh, like short discussions uh, during, you know, the, the next couple of months. And as you have seen, and as you have observed, you know, those things didn't really happen as such, you know, on the working group alias at this point in time. Now, another observation was that in general, not a lot of emails actually came on the working group alias on time, you know, during that time either. Okay? And even though that during this time, we had like a great shepherd review in that particular document, you know, there were like a few things in there, which we chairs, you know, hoped a little bit for discussions on the charter front as such. So, you know, so, so one of the things, you know, we are thinking about is, so now we are starting to look into these new application spaces for this uh, routing technology as such. Now, at the same time, you know, we can only justify, you know, rechartering and so onwards if there is sufficient amount of energy in the working group uh, to keep working on these, you know, new enhancements as such. Eh? So maybe we have to revisit again, like, okay, you know, what do we want to do? And, you know, to give us like a reasonable, 
confidence that there is you know, enough energy and enough you know, people willing to work on these type of documents. So a few of those elements we were thinking about, which could be interesting you know, to recharter if we want to do that. Yeah? Uh, so another topic, you know, what plays in our minds here is that, so as we have seen over the week, there are like many, many, many working groups here. And we actually are all fighting you know, for different slots you know, during these ITF meetings. And you know, I wonder by myself sometimes, like if, you know, does it make sense to request working group slots? You know, if we see on the working areas, it's like only like a few males, you know, flying by, you know, it's something we have to ask ourselves, you know, is it actually worthwhile or could it be maybe better to split it off to, to, uh, to, to another working group, you know, and like so divide the, the it up, you know, going forward. So now that being said, we do have very interesting topics, you know, we actually are working upon and like the L3DL stuff, which is definitely something we need from, an, you know, from a BGP SPF, you know, perspective. Uh, we are having interesting discussions on like protocol maintenance and extensions as we have seen today. Yeah? So applications and observations of what the technology is and how to improve of what we have. And we are thinking about like uh, making, you know, um, announcements to the charter to allow BGP SPF applications to appear. Mm -hmm. Now, again, so these are all like, you know, interesting ideas, but if we go ahead with this, we must be confident that there will be sufficient discussions, people interested to keep working on these documents as such. So by that, I will leave it at this point in time and I will leave the mic open for, you know, for discussions here, unless you have something to say, uh, Ketan. Anybody or will it be silent again? So I'll go first. I'll probably say the work is interesting. We should consider it for rechartering. Second thing, uh, and I'm just speaking as an individual uh, working group member. I think the work needs to be expedited. One of the reasons why you will probably see slowness is even software becomes stale with time. I know that is not the focus of IETF, but if you are really looking for an implementation and a deployment experience, you have to move some of the drafts pretty quickly. Um, uh, this is my feedback to working group chairs as well as the AD um, and everybody up the chain that get the draft either to the experimental part or to the proposed standard, but move it fast and figure out what needs to be done. Because then it always inspires other people to write and contribute more. It doesn't work otherwise that well. So my request would be, let's get the work going. Thank you. Uh, Jim? Hi, Jim Gishard. Uh, just, just a couple of comments. So, um, so the first one is um, to echo what Keo just said. Um, I already gave you a commitment that I will not be the bottleneck. Um, but I need you to give me the documents before I can do anything with them. So, um, but I do give you that commitment that I won't be that bottleneck. So that, that's the first thing. The second thing is do bear in mind that, um, you don't have to have a face-to-face -face meeting in order for the working group to continue. Um, you know, if there's work that, um, is, is being done and there's not really that much to talk about at the face-to-face -face, and that's fine. Um, but we do need to get this charter uh, sorted out um, that there's clearly some stuff on there that we, we can add. But I, again, would echo what the chair said. Please get to the mailing list. Let's get these things documented on there and let's get this moving. And let's get some energy. Yep. Thank you. So that is definitely also like a, like a path forward eh? instead of actually... You know, waiting each single time for like a, like an IETF meeting to happen and then do something to actually do it more frequently and trigger activity through like interim, you know, periodically, especially now that we are, you know, we are converging on, you know, the first, you know, piece of work and we, you know, in the end zone, I think it would be, you know, very helpful from that perspective. And hopefully that will trigger more discussions on the working group also, you know, on the other side. The end zone. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, so by the way, and, and any any comments or, or anything else? Anything else? You know, you would like to add to you know the open mic part of this particular uh, session here. Wow, it has never been so silent in a working group. Ah, Randy. Randy, yes. When do we expect to see a draft charter? When do we expect to see the draft charter? So, so uh, so I think the question uh, here was: uh, Is this is this all that uh, okay? Does the working group agree that these are the things that we should take up, right? And is there anything else? Uh, so at least we need a like a bullet list of items, and we will also send this on the list. So let's get the bullet list first, and when we have that, then we can uh, work on a draft. Right? But it has to come from the working group. We've been discussing it for years. You, you are not wrong. The, the situation at the moment is that, you know, so, so we're trying to work upon like a reshortering. Uh, then there was like some wait for having a shepherd review, which took some time. We are there right now. And we're now, you know, finishing off this first document here. And we are now looking into you know, the different topics on, on where we can extend the charter for this point. And our hopes was for me and Ketan as chairs here to get from the working group uh, an understanding of, you know, what are those things, you know, they actually feel, you know, uh, where this particular working group should move into, eh? especially looking into, you know, because if it comes from the working group itself, then the hopes for a more energetic collaboration here is higher. So the, the aspirations there. So, But you're not wrong. Eh? So we've been talking about this for years and it has been stalling. And to some degree that is, you know, yeah, unfortunate. Alvaro. Hey, guys. Um, I hope you can hear me. Nod, say something. Yes? Yes. Thumbs up? Nothing? OK, there we go. Um, so I. Knowing that maybe I was the bottleneck before, and, and knowing that Jim is not going to be the bottleneck going forward, um, I'm going to say that that sometimes less is more. Um, not only has the working group been discussing the charter for a, a while, uh, there's work in your slide that is basically done. Um, you know, the L3DL work is all but ready to go, um, in my opinion, and. I'm not the one approving anything, but in my opinion, um, if we're so close to the uh, main draft being published, we should go ahead with protocol maintenance and L3DL and uh, you know, not delay the charter anymore, but be ready with that so that as, long, as soon as the, as the work is, is opened, the charter is approved, we can go and push the L3DL stuff out and uh, get that done with. Uh, in the meantime, it'll give everyone time to get energy and more ideas on what other uh, uses or, or applications or whatever else is going to be there. Because I don't see anyone, you know, running up to the mic with any current ideas right now. Randy Bush again, Arcus. Um, what I'm asking for is a specific action item on specific people to draft the new charter. The action item is on us. <laughs> the action item is on us, chairs, right, uh, to do that. So we will put these points out on the list, uh, maybe give a couple of weeks to see if anything else is to be added or any, uh, removed. And uh, hope there is some responses. Uh, yes, no. And then uh, we work on the draft. Target draft by end of year? Yes. Yeah, so. Yes. 
definitely. If you need help, tell us people. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so anything else anybody would like to contribute? If not, then we can give you back about 30 minutes. Can I jump the mic? Uh, I just want to thank the chairs. This is fantastic work. Finally, you're taking it up and thank you. Yeah, it's Jim again. Um, I, I, I may be missing something, but, but, but to, be, to be frank, the, the, the changes that we need to make for the charter for those, at least that first bullet point is pretty minimal. So it shouldn't take us long to do that. And so what I would suggest is perhaps if you can come up with a draft uh, change to the charter from the chair's perspective, put that out on the mailing list. Let's get everybody to say yay or nay, and then let's get uh, get that done at least. Uh, the other pieces, the extensions and so forth, um, applications, not so important. We, we can do that again later, um, but let's at least get that. And then as Alvaro said, we can get that L3D3 DL uh, work out the way and we can you know, deal with everything that we already have. So. That shouldn't take us too long to do that. It's pretty simple. Um, and let's. Yeah, I mean, year end to me is like way too far out there. I, I'd, I'd rather see it quicker than that if, if, if we can. So the year end time was not given by us. It was asked by Randy. <laughs> so we said, yes, definitely before year end, but that does not mean at year end. <laughs> Your end is really fast for this working group. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. No, we just want to do it. We just want to do it once and get it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you are okay if you just do first yeah, LDD and then, and then in, in about like a year, like do something else. Yeah, yeah. Because I would do all three. Yeah, and we have to draw three. Right? I would do all three one shot. I would do one all three one shot. Why increase what? Implementation. Yeah. So people can play. It's recorded.